use headphones for best experience. for your fantastic support. Hi. Welcome to another video. So I've been doing a lot of um, videos about maps. As you might have noticed, most of the maps have been um, very large scale, is that the right word? Or is it a small scale? I'm not sure, but they have been showing a really big area, like a country or a continent or even a planet. But today I would like to do something different and I would like to show you a very local map. the scale it's one to ten thousand so I guess this number is quite small according to other maps one meter or maybe one uh, centimeter on the map is ten thousand centimeters in reality Uh, this is an area in Stockholm, or actually not in Stockholm, but very close to Stockholm. I think Stockholm is here to the west, and this is called Nacka. So it's the city just east of Stockholm. But it's not so much considered a city of its own, because I mean, uh, Stockholm is now a big urban area, so it's part of the greater Stockholm in a way. But there's an um, interesting area here. This is only part of it that's showing here. Uh, it's a big old forest area, really popular for lot of different outdoor exercising, running, biking, and, uh, skiing, walking, yeah. So, it's part of the Nacka Reservate, the nature reserve of Nacka. And I would like to focus a bit on this very particular area. So I'd better zoom in a bit. This summer I have actually spent a lot of time here, this area, and uh, I bought this map, and I brought it to this forest, and I just love spending time in the forest. Not so much before, but uh, something I really have discovered this summer. So I have planned some jogging routes, jogging trails from this different tracks, paths. You can 
see here. And um, I planned on the map, drawn on the map, how how I should run this time, and then when I come home, I maybe change my mind in some details. I think that this was really a challenging slope here, and then I have to to revise it a bit, perhaps. I've tried to find routes that, that are approximately five kilometers long. And, um, yeah, I think that would take me like half an hour to travel by running. And, um, one thing that I've done is also that I have memorized and I wanted to like learn to navigate on this uh, these tracks and it wasn't very easy in the beginning I I was lost many times and when I was lost I was a bit frustrated but I must say I kind of enjoyed being lost for a while because uh, it's not that big this area so Somehow I knew that if I just walk in one direction, I will reach a point where I'm not lost any longer. But I realized in this area in the middle, in the center of this area, there are actually no really big tracks. There are just small tracks on this map. It's also a small creek or a brook, you can see here on the map. It's a lot of marshes and bogs. And um, I remember the first time I tried to cross this area and navigate through it, I was completely lost. Came from here, I think, and my plan was to cross it like this, but I ended up here somewhere and was completely lost. But eventually, I finally managed to end up here. I recognized. This big, this big track here, and then I returned home and tried to figure out where I had been during this time. I don't know, maybe 15-20 minutes or so, I had the feeling I was completely lost in the middle of a forest. I named this part here of the forest, or if I maybe saw it on an old map somewhere. So now it's called the uh, Tarmosan, the pine tree swamp or something. So um, it's a track here you can walk and quite easily find. Here, here's a track as well. But uh, all the tracks in uh, Talmosan, quite, it's quite a challenge to find the right path. So, what I did was that I start 
to plan more in detail. And I also, after a while, started to name the places I was uh, passing on my way. And I decided to name a place every 100 meter. Also, it was a good way of keeping track on where I was and how long, how far away I was from from the final five kilometers that would be the total distance of my jogging route. And I can say I was jogging in the beginning because I was just searching and uh, standing still and looking and trying different um, directions and everything like that. Took pictures, uh, try to remember all the features I saw and that I noticed around me. And and I started to enjoy this labeling process. So now I have two different five kilometer long tracks or trails. And I will start to show you the first one. Um, it starts from here show you some pictures later, but um, here's actually a big sign where it says start and finish. So it's a good starting point and end point as well. And uh, I guess it's because of this, um, this is a, a illuminated jogging track or a skiing track in, during winter. couple of kilometers but, um, I found it quite boring to just run on this one so I wanted to discover this part of the forest but I start at the same point here so this is uh, Nedremyren yeah and I should talk about uh, the 100 meter distance Perhaps because um, maybe you're not all very used to meters and kilometers. So if we take a distance here, let's start here. And then we have the distance 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 meters. Seven, eight, nine, ten. That one thousand meter. That's uh, one kilometer. And then we have uh, one, two, three, four, five more. Five hundred more meters. So this distance here. It's actually 1.5 kilometer. And um, converting that to feet and miles, then we have for 100 meter, we have um, approximately 330 feet. So it's 330, 660 and approximately 1,000 feet. And then we go on. 1,300, uh, 1,600, approximately 2,000. And um, 3, 6, 
thousand three six four thousand three six five thousand so this is approximately five thousand feet and that would be approximately one mile or actually a little bit more so approximately five thousand three hundred feet something like that so that's one mile so my one hundred meter distances is um, equivalent to three hundred and thirty feet and the total distance of five kilometer would be approximately three miles, a little bit more. But now I'll start with the labeling. Nedre Myren, the starting point. Diket. Pikuporna. Hundrastgården. Superstenen, barriären, skruven, söderstig, skrotmossen, lockstig. Billostigskorset, named after that I was completely lost here the first day because there are tracks in each every direction here, and that's the first kilometer. Kapellstigarna, Söderögla. Andra spången. Kontrollåsen. Österbäck. Stupenvägen. Bäckstenstigen. Korsgrän. Västra lövsumpen. Stenstoppspasset. Bäckstigen. Dalenstigen. Spikstigen. Bäckdalen. Dalens kors. Ädla dalen. Korvstad. Now we travel 2.5 kilometers. I forgot the 2 kilometer stop that was in uh, Bäckstigen, Dalensstigen. Let's go on. Svängträd. Bergbucklarna. Talmosranden. Prärien. Hittu. Norra Parat Ön Närmare Klöverdeppan 
particular barrier. And now we are at 3.5 kilometer. Again, I forgot the 3 kilometer stop. It was here. The hit it. Sykkel Berget, named after all the bikes in this area. It's a lot of very popular area for for mountain biking. So actually I found it quite uh, useful to look at the, the maps they're using and that they're creating for their trails. So it's actually one mountain biking trail here called Fem Svora. It means five really challenging something. Suppose they mean hills, slope. And uh, here's another mountain biking trail called uh, Traktor Makt that I found on the websites for, for mountain biking. Traktor Makt, it's the power of tractors. And here's the one called uh, champs -Elysée. So you can really see the tracks the from from the bikes here some some places. So here here we have Sukkel Barriet and um, we go on. Stakes Korset again. Stin Swingen. Lilla Swingen. Stora Swingen. Mossbron. Here we have the four kilometer stop. We have one kilometer more to go. Stora Sten Rondell Sten Branten Solkorset Perfekta Korset Cykelhöjden. Bäcksbången. Joggsvängen. Rotstiken. Berg. our five kilometer stop and then it's just 100 meters back to Nedre Myre. places that I pass. I mean if I, if it's a if it's a route that I that I walk quite often. I just start to do that almost automatically I guess. It could be a mix of historical I mean Geographical names is always a mix of historical events that have happened there, or but also like observations from the surroundings and uh, and also help for navigation. Like 
take uh, turn left uh, after that we have a big rock looking like a troll <laughs> or something and I find it interesting all this labeling naming that I think humans have done even ever since we started to be humans I mean that must, must have been one of the first things we did ever since we started to talk using our language invented language I guess it was one of the first topics because we really needed to communicate navigation of our surroundings and uh, yeah thank you a lot of names in the area where we our closest area for example where we live there are really creative and interesting and fascinating and it makes you imagine start to think about what could have happened here or why why is it called that what does that mean I think a lot of about a lot of history when I hear names because somehow names don't change that often so sometimes or Quite often, I guess, it's names that doesn't tell anything about today, how it looks today, but uh, more of what it looked like a long time ago. It's like poetry in a way, to walk along a path and uh, label it along the way now we'll take a look at the second route that I have uh, prepared and uh, tried and it also starts from uh, Nedremyra Diket Pikupuna Hundrast Gordon Superstinan Barrieren Skruven Söderstig Mossen Klöverdeppan Cykelberget And this is our first kilometer Then we walk in, the, in this direction Capelle Korset Klocktornet Magasinbacken Berg- och dalbanan Tandemstigen Gordon Nacken Tre systrar Cykelkorset And now we're at the two 
two kilometer stop or point and let's go on. Trollskogen Nystup Långsjöstup Mellanstig Irrskog Stenstopp Tre bröder Sikla vi Sikla muren Spikstigen This is our three kilometer stop Two more to go Spiken Morskog Bäckstensbro Platåstigen Bäckplatån Norrkälla Österbäck Kontrollåsen Andra spången This is our four kilometer stop Söderregla Kapellstigarna Bibelostigskorset Lockstig Skrotmossen Söderstig Skruven Barriären Superstenen Hundrastgården This is our fifth Kilometer stop. There are actually three hundred more meters till we back to where we started. So we have to pass Bikupuna Ticket and then we're back. After 5.3 kilometer at Nedermyren. So now we have been uh, crossing this challenging, at least what I thought, area twice. Here's one track. Here's another no, from here it was yeah. and I guess the reason this is so it's not that easy to navigate here is because as you can see it's um, a small creek here or brook and it's actually at least now when I seen it, it's completely dry, it has uh, a couple of branches
branches here. And there are a lot of um, marshes and bogs. And it's a really low altitude on this landscape. And I guess if uh, there, there are actually a lot of deers here, a lot of animals I've seen. And I guess when uh, when they walk, it doesn't take long before it it's a path there because the ground and the soil somehow makes it easy to to make a path by just walking a couple of times. So there are actually more more uh, tracks than visible on this map. So sometimes you wonder. Oh, if you should go right or left or it's not easy to take the information from the map and see how you're gonna behave in the real world. So it's like a big wetland or marsh area. And uh, here there are more rocks, cliffs. Here it's a really steep cliffs, as you can see on the altitude lines here on the map. And also these steep signs. Symbol. And then it's another problem because many times the path seems to disappear into a rock. So you, it continues on the actual rock. And then it's not easy to see where it continues after. After the rock, it, you, you have to find it again and then it's a new rock. It's a very common landscape at least in the Swedish forests, altering lower areas with the like moss and and um, mires and uh, bogs altered with the higher rocks. So especially this area was a bit difficult to learn to navigate through. You can see it's a bit complicated with all these small paths. Also here the area I call Irskog somehow tells about that it's easy to get lost here as well took a while before I could come from this point and reach this point. That's why I call this Irskog. To Irra in Swedish, that's to just have completely been lost and uh, walk in any direction and lost your track somehow. Also, this is interesting because on this area, yeah, here you can see some more of this color, but this means uh, impenetrable area because it's really dense and a uh, lot of vegetation here. So this is like the heart of the Talmosa area. It's dark here almost all the time really a bit creepy, quiet, dark, doesn't get, the uh, trees don't get much sunlight, so there are, at least when I was there, there were no leaves, no 
needles, just uh, very dry, very compact, dense, tall stems. So this is where the uh, this uh, old uh, creek. begins on this map. And um, I actually took some pictures with my phone. And uh, I'll show you some of these some areas I find interesting. There are, for example, a lot of footbridges. It's very simple, simple um, footbridges across some uh, wet areas here, mostly across this uh, old uh, creek. Even though it's no water in it, it's like, yeah, maybe from the time when it was water, sometimes during some seasons maybe there is water there, I, I don't know. But um, even though you can like jump or cross it without the footbridge, there are some footbridges here. And I started to find it really interesting, the designs of them. So, for example, we have something I call the first Spongen, the first footbridge, located here. Because this was the first distance, part of the distance that I explored. So then th this was the first footbridge. And then we have the second footbridge, Andra Spongen. And uh, here we have the third footbridge, Tredje Spongen. one of my labels for the for the trail. Another label was uh, Beck Spongen. Small footbridge here over this little creek. And also something I call Speaken. Means the nail. It's actually a really narrow bridge someone has put there and it's not <laughs> very easy to cross over because it's really sharp. It looks like a nail but it's quite fun actually <laughs> to try to cross it and I mean it doesn't matter if, if you fall because it's really shallow and it's no water underneath so and then uh, yeah this is a small footbridge I discovered just yesterday call it uh, the Bextian's Brew it's somehow hidden here near this uh, big uh, rock that I call the Bextian. Big rock by the creek. So that's Bextian's brew. And then we have um, also a bit hidden Mossbrun, also labeled on one of my jogging routes. It 
looked really ancient. So it was a lot of moss on it. it looked really old. I'm not sure if it if you can walk on it. Because it's not exactly on the track, it's a bit on the side here. And um, do we have more? Yeah, we have here along the um, the uh, illuminated jogging track. It's a really big. Yeah, it's over this this little creek here. That's actually a really big footbridge, very wide and uh, well constructed. A lot of people running and walking here, skiing in the winter, I guess. And there's actually a southern version of it here, along this track. So I call it the Nora Parade. This is Sadra Parat. Look exactly the same. And um, I think it's a small footbridge here as well. Over this brook. I'm not sure I have given it a name yet. And um, there are some more interesting features here, I think, that you find after a while. Yeah, I can show you a picture of the Villustings Korset where I was completely lost the first day tried to navigate here. You can see there are tracks in every direction here. And um, it's an interesting part of the forest. It's really high altitude, it's a, like a mountain or high cliff. And uh, I named it Nakken. Actually I read about it before, that's why I call it Nakken. So I read that it gave name to this whole area, this whole city called Nakka. And I read that when you traveling into towards Stockholm a long time ago you mostly went by boat came this way and then it was like a landmark you could see this something reminded of a neck somehow this high mountain that's why it's called Nacken and um, I found uh, also a landmark that I found easy to use for navigation. I, I renamed it the Three Sisters. Three Sisters. Three big rocks close to each other. And also we have the three brothers here. Three brothers. So three rocks, no. close formation. Show you Svengtret. 
tree that uh, with a stem that's really curved. Maybe I can show you the start and stop. Of course, this is an old, uh, it used to be an old chapel here, not just old chapel, in the 19th century. But the, the chapel, I guess it's not here anymore, but you can find the, the oh, I'm not sure about the word, clock donut, the church bell tower, in a way. It's really a surprise when you're just uh, running in the forest and you all of a sudden you see this old tower. So it's an old cemetery here. Yes, that's what I wanted to show you today. Yeah, and one more thing. Siklamuren. There were some remains of something that made me think of an old wall or a ruin or something. It's located here, and uh, I've seen on maps that it's actually right on the border between Stockholm and Nacka. So maybe it was some kind of mark for or a border, even if it wasn't. I call it Siklamuren, the wall of Sikla. Sikla is this part of this part of Stockholm and uh, this part of Nacka. You can see it here, written Sikla. So now you see parts of the Almosen and uh, parts of uh, Naka Nature Reserve area. Hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Sleep well. Take care.